Anti-diabetic medication, Wikipedia article audio. Drugs used in diabetes treat diabetes mellitus by lowering glucose levels in the blood. With the exceptions of insulin, exonatide, liraglutide, and pramlintide, all are administered orally and are thus also called oral hypoglycemic agents or oral antihyperglycemic agents. There are different classes of anti-diabetic drugs, and their selection depends on the nature of the diabetes, age, and situation of the person, as well as other factors. Insulin Sensitizers Biguanides Thiazolidindians Linkinase activators Secretagogues Sulfonylureas Non-sulfonylurea secretagogues Meglatinides Alpha-glucosidase inhibitors Peptide analogues Injectable in Cretan mimetics Injectable glucagon-like peptide analogues and agonists. Gastric inhibitory peptide analogues. Dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors. Injectable amylin analogues. Glycosurics. Comparison. Generic. Diabetes mellitus type 1 is a disease caused by the lack of insulin. Insulin must be used in type I, which must be injected. Diabetes mellitus type 2 is a disease of insulin resistance by cells. Type 2 diabetes mellitus is the most common type of diabetes. Treatments include agents that increase the amount of insulin secreted by the pancreas, agents that increase the sensitivity of target organs to insulin, and agents that decrease the rate at which glucose is absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract. Several groups of drugs, mostly given by mouth, are effective in type 2, often in combination. The therapeutic combination in type 2 may include insulin, not necessarily because oral agents have failed completely, but in search of a desired combination of effects. The great advantage of injected insulin in type 2 is that a well-educated patient can adjust the dose, or even take additional doses, when blood glucose levels measured by the patient, usually with a simple meter, as needed by the measured amount of sugar in the blood. Insulin is usually given subcutaneously, either by injections or by an insulin pump. Research of other routes of administration is underway. In acute care settings, insulin may also be given intravenously. In general, there are three types of insulin, characterized by the rate which they are metabolized by the body. They are rapid-acting insulins, intermediate-acting insulins and long-acting insulins. Examples of rapid-acting insulins include Examples of intermediate acting insulins include Examples of long acting insulins include Most anti diabetic agents are contraindicated in pregnancy, in which insulin is preferred. Insulin sensitizers address the core problem in type 2 diabetes insulin resistance. Biguanides reduce hepatic glucose output and increase uptake of glucose by the periphery, including skeletal muscle. Although it must be used with caution in patients with impaired liver or kidney function, metformin, a biguanide, has become the most commonly used agent for type 2 diabetes in children and teenagers. Among common diabetic drugs, Metformin is the only widely used oral drug that does not cause weight gain. Typical reduction in glycated hemoglobin values for metformin is 1.52.0%. Metformin is usually the first-line medication used for treatment of type 2 diabetes. In general, 
it is prescribed at initial diagnosis in conjunction with exercise and weight loss, as opposed to in the past, where it was prescribed after diet and exercise had failed. There is an immediate release as well as an extended release formulation, typically reserved for patients experiencing GI side effects. It is also available in combination with other oral diabetic medications. Thiazolidindians, also known as glitazones, bind to PAR, a type of nuclear regulatory protein involved in transcription of genes regulating glucose and fat metabolism. These PPARs act on peroxisome proliferator responsive elements. The PPREs influence insulin sensitive genes, which enhance production of MRNAs of insulin dependent enzymes. The final result is better use of glucose by the cells. Typical reductions in glycated hemoglobin values are 1.52.0%. Some examples are Multiple retrospective studies have resulted in a concern about rosiglitazone's safety, although it is established that the group, as a whole, has beneficial effects on diabetes. The greatest concern is an increase in the number of severe cardiac events in patients taking it. The ADOPT study showed that initial therapy with drugs of this type may prevent the progression of disease, as did the DREAM trial. Concerns about the safety of rosiglitazone arose when a retrospective meta-analysis was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. There have been a significant number of publications since then, and a Food and Drug Administration panel voted, with some controversy, 20,3 that available studies supported a signal of harm, but voted 22,1 to keep the drug on the market. The meta-analysis was not supported by an interim analysis of the trial designed to evaluate the issue, and several other reports have failed to conclude the controversy. This weak evidence for adverse effects has reduced the use of rosiglitazone, despite its important and sustained effects on glycemic control. Safety studies are continuing. In contrast, at least one large prospective study, Proactive 05, has shown that pioglitazone may decrease the overall incidence of cardiac events in people with type 2 diabetes who have already had a heart attack. The Lin kinase activator, tolimidone has been reported to potentiate insulin signaling in a manner that is distinct from the glitazones. The compound has demonstrated positive results in a Phase 2A clinical study involving 130 diabetic subjects. Secretagogues are drugs that increase insulin output from the pancreas. Sulfonylureas were the first widely used oral antihyperglycemic medications. They are insulin secretagogues triggering insulin release by inhibiting the KADP channel of the pancreatic beta cells. Eight types of these pills have been marketed in North America, but not all remain available. The second-generation drugs are now more commonly used. They are more effective than first-generation drugs and have fewer side effects. All may cause weight gain. Sulfonylureas bind strongly to plasma proteins. Sulfonylureas are useful only in type 2 diabetes, as they work by stimulating endogenous release of insulin. They work best with patients over 40 years old who have had diabetes mellitus for under 10 years. They cannot be used with type I diabetes, or diabetes of pregnancy. They can be safely used with metformin or glitazones. The primary side effect is hypoglycemia. Typical reductions in glycated hemoglobin values for second-generation sulfonylureas are 1.02.0%. Meglitinides help the pancreas produce insulin and are often called short-acting secretagogues. 
They act on the same potassium channels as sulfonylureas, but at a different binding site. By closing the potassium channels of the pancreatic beta cells, they open the calcium channels, thereby enhancing insulin secretion. They are taken with or shortly before meals to boost the insulin response to each meal. If a meal is skipped, the medication is also skipped. Typical reductions in glycated hemoglobin values are 0.51.0%. Adverse reactions include weight gain and hypoglycemia. Alpha-glucosidase inhibitors are diabetes pills but not technically hypoglycemic agents because they do not have a direct effect on insulin secretion or sensitivity. These agents slow the digestion of starch in the small intestine, so that glucose from the starch of a meal enters the bloodstream more slowly, and can be matched more effectively by an impaired insulin response or sensitivity. These agents are effective by themselves only in the earliest stages of impaired glucose tolerance, but can be helpful in combination with other agents in type 2 diabetes. Typical reductions in glycated hemoglobin values are 0.51.0%. These medications are rarely used in the United States because of the severity of their side effects. They are more commonly prescribed in Europe. They do have the potential to cause weight loss by lowering the amount of sugar metabolized. Regular insulin, insulin Lispro, insulin aspart, insulin glycine, prompt insulin zinc. Isophane insulin, neutral protamine hogadorn, insulin zinc. Extended insulin zinc insulin insulin glargin, insulin detemir. Metformin may be the best choice for patients who also have heart failure, but it should be temporarily discontinued before any radiographic procedure involving intravenous iodinated contrast, as patients are at an increased risk of lactic acidosis. Fenformin was used from 1960s through 1980s, but was withdrawn due to lactic acidosis risk. Buformin also was withdrawn due to lactic acidosis risk. Rosiglitazone, the European Medicines Agency recommended in September 2010 that it be suspended from the EU market due to elevated cardiovascular risks. Pioglitazone, troglitazone, used in 1990s, withdrawn due to hepatitis and liver damage risk. First-generation agents, tolbutamide, acetoexamide, tolazamide, chlorpropamide, ripaglinide, nateglinide, miglitol, acarbos, voglobos. Exonatide is the first GLP-1 agonist approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes. Exonatide is not an analogue of GLP but rather a GLP agonist. Exonatide has only 53% homology with GLP, which increases its resistance to degradation by DPP4 and extends its half-life. Typical reductions in A1C values are 0.51.0%. Liraglutide, a once-daily human analogue has been developed by Novo Nordisk under the brand name Victiza. The product was approved by the European Medicines Agency on July 3, 2009, and by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration on January 25, 2010. Taspaglutide is presently in Phase 3 clinical trials with Hoffman La Roche, Lixazinatide Sanofi Aventis. Vildagliptin EU approved 2008, Citagliptin FDA approved OCT 2006, Saxagliptin FDA approved July 2009, Linagliptin FDA approved May 2, 2011, Alogliptin, Septagliptin, Tenaligliptin, Gemagliptin, Zemaglo. Dipagliphazin, 
canagliflozin, impagliflozin. Sulfonylureas glymburide, glipizide, glyburide, biguanides metformin, thiazolidindians pioglitazone, actose generic, alpha glucosidase inhibitors A carbose, meglatinides nateglinide, combination of sulfonylureas plus metformin known by generic names of the two drugs. Incretins are insulin secretagogues. The two main candidate molecules that fulfill criteria for being an incretin are glucagon-like peptide 1 and gastric inhibitory peptide. Both GLP-1 and GIP are rapidly inactivated by the enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4. Glucagon-like peptide agonists bind to a membrane GLP receptor. As a consequence, insulin release from the pancreatic beta cells is increased. Endogenous GLP has a half-life of only a few minutes, thus an analog of GLP would not be practical. These agents may also cause a decrease in gastric motility, responsible for the common side effect of nausea, and is probably the mechanism by which weight loss occurs. GLP-1 analogs resulted in weight loss and had more gastrointestinal side effects, while in general DPP-4 inhibitors were weight neutral and increased risk for infection and headache, but both classes appear to present an alternative to other anti-diabetic drugs. However, weight gain and slash or hypoglycemia have been observed when DPP-4 inhibitors were used with sulfonylureas effect on long-term health and morbidity rates are still unknown. Dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors increase blood concentration of the incretin GLP-1 by inhibiting its degradation by dipeptidyl peptidase 4. Examples are DPP-4 inhibitors lowered hemoglobin A1c values by 0.74%, comparable to other anti-diabetic drugs. A result in one RCT comprising 206 patients aged 65 or older receiving either 50 or 100 mg d of citagliptin was shown to reduce HbA1c by 0.7%. A combined result of five RCTs enlisting a total of 279 patients aged 65 or older receiving 5 mg d of saxagliptin was shown to reduce HbA1c by 0.73%. A combined result of five RCTs enlisting a total of 238 patients aged 65 or older receiving 100 mg d of vildagliptin was shown to reduce HbA1c by 1.2%. Another set of six combined RCTs involving a logliptin was shown to reduce HbA1c by 0.73% in 455 patients aged 65 or older who received 12.5 or 25 mg d of the medication. Amylin agonist analogs slow gastric emptying and suppress glucagon. They have all the incretins actions except stimulation of insulin secretion. As of 2007, pramlintide is the only clinically available amylin analog. Like insulin, it is administered by subcutaneous injection. The most frequent and severe adverse effect of pramlintide is nausea which occurs mostly at the beginning of treatment and gradually reduces. Typical reductions in A1C values are 0.51.0%. SGLT2 inhibitors block the reuptake of glucose in the renal tubules, promoting loss of glucose in the urine. This causes both mild weight loss, and a mild reduction in blood sugar levels with little risk of hypoglycemia. Oral preparations may be available alone or in combination with other agents. Examples include The side effects of SGLT2 inhibitors are derived directly from their mechanism of action, these include an increased risk of ketoacidosis, 
urinary tract infections, candidal vulvovaginitis, and hypoglycemia. The following table compares some common anti-diabetic agents, generalizing classes, although there may be substantial variation in individual drugs of each class. When the table makes a comparison such as lower risk or more convenient the comparison is with the other drugs on the table. Many anti-diabetes drugs are available as generics. These include no generics are available for dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors and other combinations.